Alright guys, this is Dokken with another Minecraft video. You heard it. And today, this is episode 24 of the Minecraft World Tour. And guys, today I'm extremely happy because this is actually the first Minecraft World Tour I can record from the new apartment. Yes indeed, it worked out finally. Got a magic bow. Didn't drop it. it, was the one we had already. Finally, it worked out guys. We are at the new apartment. I can't believe it. The internet is working. Everything is set up nicely. Uh, I'm the happiest guy ever. Today I was able to record an episode of Farming Simulator as I couldn't do anything yesterday because I had to build up the gaming room here. So that is done. And the days before, while I was still in the old apartment, I was working like a crazy man around the witch farm. And so today we can kind of do a bit of an old school world tour where I can show you progress I made. Um, caving I did another six that one day and six to seven the other so another i don't know 13 14 hours of caving went into the witch area and of course some more redstone and pretty cool setup really eager to show you guys now i'm super happy with it it's actually pretty cool and the spawn rates are about there where i want them caving as mentioned before with the new um yeah, terrain generation with all the ravines and whatnot, it is pretty crazy, but I'm done. Um, let's say 80% of all the caves around here are lit up properly. And with all the iron I got, I don't want to look over to the uh, witch farm yet, I want to keep the suspension up a bit. Um, I was able to get a lot of iron, even got excess here and also stacking up on glowstones already, some gold, found more diamond ore, um, luckily, yeah, lots of tracks, luckily I didn't have to go down too deep, um, mostly I was, yeah, lucky with the caves being on the surface, here is some of the loot I've been collecting, only some of it, there's more up in front, there's even more, and yeah, time to jug a potion here. So we can see nicely what's going on. Just that's why I was over back at the home base. And this is some spawn rates I'm liking now. At the moment the system is switched off. I have a lever here and I can control the floors. It's hooked up now to the reset back there. And before more witches despawn, let's say let's flick the lever and turn on the system. And yeah, we have this little setup here. Um, it is a cauldron that is sitting on top of my yep, uh, killing mechanism here at the end of the chain. Now we have to wait for a little bit. In the meantime, we can keep on monitoring the witch farm and see very, very decent spawn rates. Also, I'm getting um, a speed 2 buff here with the beacon. I set it to speed 2. And four more witches go down. And here we are. <laughs> the item fountain. This is stacked items now we are getting from the killing below and I can for now grab them right here. I just found that really cool. The effect, cauldron, water in there and on top of an item elevator. So um, yeah, let's empty our inventory a bit. A bunch of, there's a random chest up here. Let's put the stuff in there. Free some space so you can see what we have. All right. The redstone can go, bottles can go. Yep, should be good. So let's pick up the loot from here. Eight glowstone, seven, fourteen, four bottles, a lot of sticks, and spider eyes. And they keep on coming. Really cool. The farm is really efficient. You can get glowstone from here a lot. And I'm super happy. How it turned out now in the end. And yeah, here we got the slime stuck in the system. That is one thing I have to take care of. They're not interfering much with the system. And this is how it works. Let's get back here. I have walkways. Do I have ender balls with me? Yes. All right, so let's get in there. Need to get down first and then in. 
Okay, we made it. So pretty cool with the night vision potion. We can see it now. And I have the shaft here widened out. It's too wide. Let's turn down the volume even more. It's too wide now. The reason for it being is on top I had the vines and when I had this massive spawn rates like I have now, you can see constantly witches are basically dropping down. I had some getting stuck up there on the vines and now it's too wide. We will have a look later when we are upstairs again, I can show you, um, but it still works. Same principle, we got a trip wire in here. We got wired down to these torches and whenever a witch falls down, passes through the trip wire right there on top of us and activates the system. When that happens, and you saw it happening a few times now while we were standing down here. Oops, let me try to get out again. It's not easy. All right, that works. And get up there again. I have no feather falling boots at the moment. Need to be a bit careful. They broke finally now. Also, I lost one of the pickaxes we had. Let's set sound to 10. Yeah, so here is where we gain the, all the items. We did that last time and then <laughs> sign with an E on it. Just, yeah, makes no sense. Just pressed it. And yeah, when we have items dropping, we should see some coming by now. Uh, sometimes they don't drop anything. In most cases they do. And yeah, items then get washed along here and are pushed forward in the stream here and go around the corner and here we hit the first important part of the whole system this is uh, an item aligner uh, yeah, we just saw um, we had gunpowder coming by and there's some more redstone and sticks so you can see it nicely how they move along in the tunnels here or in the tubes and then they hit this tube and get aligned correctly and here we have the cool part then that's an item elevator. It's one of the designs we figured out while we were derping around on JL 2579's creative server. Panda um, was trying to make it as simple as possible and still survivor friendly. Um, JL and the crew already did put up a new tutorial for high yield um, item elevators. I'm suggesting you check it out. It's basically the same principle. This is one of the earlier uh, prototypes we worked there. With it is reliable for item loads like yeah this witch farm here where you don't have like <laughs> ten thousand of items flowing through um, every minute or whatever you know those those crazy high yield traps it's a different story but for one of these just fine so yeah first key part here aligning the items correctly so they're in the middle so we don't miss any and then over here we have the item elevator and you can see. Items arrive back here and they get pushed right into the middle and there it goes up. You can see that one white hole where the stick just went through and the other stuff. Um, that, that is solid glass all the way up and we only need the glass blocks in the middle. The rest is solid blocks so no items can escape. And I tested it, 100% of the items we throw in here into the stream actually make it up. And now the more complicated part, I mean... It is simple to, for example, what Etho did, he used the chicken and put it in there, laying eggs and then chickens, um, the eggs went up. If you want to inject items into one of these item elevators, it gets a bit more complicated. And this is achieved here. As you can see, we have tripwire here and ice and glass blocks. And yeah, the items... Um, yeah, race by here and activate the trip wire, and the trip wire is triggered right here. You can see that, and here we got some a pulse extender basically that makes sure um, the pulse stays on long enough. And the next component um, you need to have is a clock. We got a clock down here. As soon as this setup is activated, add the trip wire, the clock here will run. And via the pulse extender, we make sure the system runs long enough um, so we can yeah, bring all items up. And here, yeah, very simple clock, you can see it. Let's have a look at it again. That's the clock here. Right, and here is the output, and we connect it to our piston setup that pushes the things up. Let's quickly get 
up on here. Items are aligned perfectly in the middle here, or almost in the middle, so we don't miss any. That is pretty key. You can see they get flushed in and pushed upwards. There is a, sl a slim chance um, if you don't have an item elevator or a liner like I have back there that items may rest on the left and right side here of the trip wire. So you really need to be um, yeah, careful to have one of these. Um, I have this long loop in there. Why did you do that? You might ask. I will explain you in a second. Um, another safety measure for higher reliability was this cobblestone um, wall here or fence. It is not 100% necessary or it is not really necessary if you work with an item elevator. But yeah, as this is a prototype elevator, we made step by step. S um, yeah, some of the improvements are not implemented yet, but yeah, for my situation, it's just working perfect. All the items I produce here go get wash washed up. Yeah, and another key thing is after you come out with the clock here, you have that delay. And down there, you can see there's another one in there. Maybe we can see it better from up here. Yeah, this repeater connects to, uh, is the connection for this piston. So the sideway pushing and the upwards pushing is, has an offset of these four ticks here from the repeater. And of course, sticky pistons and glass blocks are yeah, next to the sticky pistons and are mo um, getting moved around. So now the next question is, ah, yeah, and of course, I try to make sure the room looks a bit clean. And um, here I have to fill in some more of the smooth stone. But I'm getting a lot. I actually maybe have some. No. I'm getting a lot as I'm working with the Silk Touch pickaxe at the moment mainly and will repair it. Um, the Fortune 2 one we had is used up by the by now. Um, yeah. Um, I had talking about the repairing. Um, you guys said <coughs> with renaming you can unlimitedly unlimited uh, or you can fix your stuff um, over and over and over again. It is like if you have tools that have a bit older and have some enchantments on them. It is not always like it doesn't make sense. Let's keep it like that because it's gonna get so expensive that you just don't want to do it. It's not worth it. So it's all in theory. It's always possible, but for some tools, it just doesn't make sense. Um, for this one, it probably would make sense as Silk Touch is a pretty rare enchantment or one of the most rare, and I might uh, go repair that and try to uh, keep it. But um, in general, I would prefer to repair tools that only have two enchantments, um, um, digging tools with efficiency and unbreaking. Um, to repair those can be really cheap and really worth the time and levels. But yeah, as I said, um, diamonds never been a big problem so far in this world. And it's always cool to enchant some new stuff. But if you find some good pickaxes like the one I have, you want to keep it and hopefully repair it. So. Another thing I want to address, why do I have this huge loop here? Well, I was uh, monitoring the loot collection upstairs for a while and we are getting um, a, lot of, um, oh no, a lot of different uh, pieces of loot, but yeah, my exit here is not really perfected. Wait a sec, I have to focus. Swim up, stay on there a bit and get over. No. Let's try again. Swim up, stay up, and when we go up, you go over. There we go. So I want to have an item sorting system down there at some stage, um, because mainly here I'm after the glowstone, the gunpowder, and yeah, that's mainly it. Maybe the redstone, of course, and that's um, another easy way to get a lot of redstone around here. Here is the loot collection, pretty cool. Here is my TNT chest or yeah, gunpowder chest so far, I'm collecting that. And yeah, so item sorting would be really helpful here. I might just get rid of most of the sticks and um, also maybe the sugar and bottles because um, I've got a lot of them stored up. Do we still have the night vision effect? Not at the moment. So let's say I'm gonna rush back. Oh, let's see if we can if you can see it like that as well. From here, we should be able to access 
the drop so you can have a look at that as well ah yeah there we go you can see it's a bit dark now um, let me get a torch ready should work out there we go that should be good enough you can see it's a two wide drop now it's pretty cool and you can see one witch being stuck there eventually it will break loose if another one falls on top of it but as I had this one white shaft here only I had like 20 witches stuck there and I was like what is going on I see witches drop like crazy and the loot was not corresponding and I was like huh and I checked everything I checked the elevator numerous times and last thing I checked was look down here and saw there were like hanging in there like crazy so that is fixed now we got a distance of two and only one white um, yeah row of vines with the buttons and when the thing is running for a while and we have high yield the maximum I saw was um, four witches that kind of were hanging out literally but it kind of fixed itself after a short amount of time and that should be alright so let's close that off again so we don't get no other spawns wait I have to slip out here and yeah um, also, in rare cases now, let's get back I get and quickly hop into our bed. In rare cases I get spiders spawning here and other mobs because there is a low chance it can happen. Just thought there was a creeper back there. Um, but in general it rarely happens and if it happens maybe sometimes also a single slime spawns in. Um, okay, but they get washed down and will eventually um, be held up in my draining system. So that is the main part of the witch farm done. Now, as it is here not, um, not the way I like it, I like nice buildings. I want to start making um, some kind of a witch hut hutch building here soon, resembling a witch hut. Working with wood again and make a nice area where I have a lot of chests and where I can collect the loot, but also can control the multiple functions I want to add to this farm. One would be the item sorting, that is one thing. The other thing is I want to have an option to send items or the witches to an AFK place and that would be the nether here, in my case, at least for the witches themselves. What I want to do is, you had this, we had the drop shoot here. In this drop shoot I want to build in piston wall or piston floor that closes the thing up and a water stream and this way I will be able to catch the witches and transport them into a nether portal and thus send them to the nether and store them there. That's the plan. And that seems to be pretty interesting um, if you ask me. I would be able to store hundreds of them and now let's do a little test. You can see if you want to test efficiency of your mob farms. Um, let's go to peaceful. Keep an eye on the entity count. And let's have a look. So... 20 and that includes some of the items that are still in the system let's grab them and you can see right now 15 pretty low value so we got 15 entities somewhere around and seven nine so some some unfriend um, yeah some friendly ones are close by some squid and maybe some animals and sheep but not much pretty low so let's turn on difficulty hard again have a quick look and you can see the number the entity count stays relatively low um, but we can see a bunch of witches spawning in front of us like a lot it's pretty dark now again or hard to see we will approach and put a torch down so you can check it out but there's a lot see like a whole lot <laughs> oh, now they're fighting against each other. That's pretty interesting. They will make sure they heal each other as well. Also, if you kill them like that um, with a sword, for example, from below here, they normally can't see me. You can kill them from here and also have a chance to get their rare drops, which would be um, yeah, um, healing potions and so on. You will not get get them just by drop killing them like we do with our loot collection but you can see really good rates we got about 
50 entities in the area and at least three quarters of that should be witches. And that is when you can tell that your caving is paying off and the efficiency of a farm is good. Flushed him down. All right, I have this little tunnel now, digging down a bit and ran into some coal here. But yeah, coal-wise we are equipped well. I have to worry about that too much. I just knock out. Okay, I just came out right there where I didn't want to come out. Okay, I have to go down one, two, three, four, five more blocks. And then we can poke through. Let's put a torch down. All right, I have to fix that up there. Um, I think around here, just below there actually, I want to put my piston closing mechanism. Yeah, let's make it this high. So, did I grab the, the button I just lost? No, it should be, can grab it back at the item fountain go for now I want to get the coal all right and yeah in here pistons closing the area off we will use sticky pistons have a solid floor and then have dispensers on one side and put a portal in there I might go want to go down a bit when we have the, let's say the piston floor would be here and the pole would be there. I wouldn't... Yeah, I might have them bouncing up and down and might have them be caught up in the vines. So I should make it a bit further down so I have enough room to work. Yep, that should be all right. That should be all right. Okay, I'm gonna prepare me a little work platform here. And I need to get some pistons ready. That is seven wide here, so we need 14 sticky pistons. And maybe I should put a ladder in here. At least for the time we work around. Sticks is also no problem. All right, yeah, do some preparations and then we'll Try to put in a closing mechanism there. All right. So, we have this area here, by the way. Maybe you saw it already in the last world download. I have um, quite the area dug out behind here already. Um, now, finally, it merges up. Um, I, yeah, I guess they made it a little bit wrong. I have to go a bit lower, but this is some kind of a control room where I might put some wiring and uh, maybe some hidden chests later on. I didn't know how big the mechanism will be in the end. So yeah, I have some additional room. Always good. So yeah, right here, this is where the portal will be. I need two more obsidian blocks to complete it. And then the pistons will go right there along, along the sides, just like that front of it I want to use these blocks the cobble brick and yeah the wire we can put on here very simple I need to make me a few more it's good to work with these they're easy to get if you run silk touch tools because no additional energy and it's good to put your redstone on there so it's hidden a bit and I might put uh, the connection wire behind the portal here so we kind of go over there let's quickly dig through here leave one block on the back side of the portal to kind of block it off a bit and that should work out let's replace this in here make, make it look a bit more nice I have to grab some more regular wood kind of want to make the area in here a bit more pretty although yeah I mean you don't you know, will not be around here actually so yeah it's not too important just a little bit pretty so it's not super messy I don't like that all right and then we just take some redstone we want to throw that on here also gonna throw it on here and then probably 
come through here Oop. and we don't want that we want to close it off here probably a bit so we just merge back here we definitely need a repeater somewhere in here to be able to control it but we could also just work with a redstone torch that is somewhere here attached to the wall and we have the lever around let's see if it reaches yep reaches all the way so we save up on some repeaters and this will be the plug um, where we yeah, connect our control mechanism to it let's just dig it out behind so we can easily find it and then somewhere upstairs um, let's quickly make a lever I will have this lever or a button or I don't know maybe I make a control board and then I can control the pistons from here and of course we need to have walls on the side it's just this two wide chute so we close it off right there and in here then we're going to put two dispensers with water buckets and when we switch the system we can dra draw the power from that line here um, those dispensers should be activated and we should be able to flush the witches along here and there will be water flowing here so they should take not, no fall damage at all as they're held up also by the vines here so should be fine and I think it's still like that if you drop in water you will not take any fall damage at all and yeah this is the principle of the system here and next episode we need to try out where this portal connects to I strongly assume it will connect directly to the portal we use at the moment so there might be some portal moving involved um, we need to exactly position it to line those portals up to connect them and then should be able to yeah, have two separate entrances because yeah, we don't want to end up at the same portal like the witches do Whoa. no we don't we don't want to mess with them quite a lot <laughs> so alright guys I'd say that's it for today. Thanks a lot for your support as usual. I hope the sub boxes are all right again. Last episode, sub boxes were broken. So in case you have missed that, please go back. Check it out. It was an interesting episode as well. See you next time. Bye-bye.